and say after me now, Father God in heaven, let your word be in my mind. Let your word be in my heart. Let your word be on my lips. And let your grace show in my life. Amen. This is the Gospel reading, Mark's Gospel. This is chapter 1, verses 21 to 28. So it says in verse 21, then they went into Capernaum, and immediately on the Sabbath he entered the synagogue and taught. So talking about Jesus entering into the synagogue to teach. Now, you'll notice that Jesus always went to the Jewish synagogue. And, and the Apostle Paul, when he was on his journeys of evangelizing and bringing people to God and, and establishing the churches, he always went to the synagogue first. When we evangelize, it's really important that we don't forget the Jewish people, the Jewish nation, that many of them are not saved, they don't understand about Jesus. And so, you know, first to the Jew, then to the Gentile. And that was the whole thing of the parables, for example, the, the banquet where God says, you know, invite people, and then they didn't come, so then he'll go out to the byways and the highways and invite others in that weren't normally going to be there. Mm -hmm. And that's what it's about, it's that kind of thing. So Mark's Gospel then, it says, And they were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. So whereas the scribes were debating stuff and not sure what things meant completely and exploring together and saying, well, I think it could mean this and it could mean that, but there's debate around it. And we have that today. There's a lot of debate around scriptures and a debate about what, you know, what, what God is saying in situations. Um, but Jesus didn't have that lack of um, surety in what he was doing. He wasn't indecisive. He taught with authority. And so when we teach with authority, people obviously take that more uh, as, a, as a sign that we know what we're talking about. So Jesus is teaching with authority. And the other thing is, when it comes to the dark side of things, this is how we see suddenly how we are supposed to be dealing with the dark side and with other things outside of um, normal teaching. It says in verse 23, there was a man in their synagogue with an unclean spirit and he cried out, saying, let us alone, what have, you to do with, what have we to do with you, Jesus of Nazareth? Did you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him. Now he didn't shout down his neck and he didn't, you know, have a shouting match with a person and have these kind of things that you see on the movies where they're backwards and forwards and backwards and no. Jesus said very simply, be quiet and come out of him. Mm -hmm. So he rebuked this spirit and when the unclean spirit had convulsed him, that is the man he was in, and cried out with a loud voice, he came out of him. So there isn't necessary it's not necessary to have lots of you know commotion and, and lots of paraphernalia going on and crosses flying around everywhere and holy water being thrown over everybody and all you know it, it, Jesus just said very simply very quietly be quiet come out of him and that's all we need to do when it comes to these things we don't have to spend ages trying to get some, if you really have the authority if you're not in Christ, you don't have the authority. You can't get these things out, and you could have that problem. But as a child of God, if you really are a child of God, you have the power, in Jesus' name, to be able to rebuke evil spirits and to very, very simply and very quietly, very authoritarily, just tell them to come out, to depart. You rebuke them, and you send them back from where they came from. And when the unclean spirit had convulsed him and cried out with a loud voice, he came out of him. It was as simple as that. And then they were all amazed, it says here, so that they questioned among themselves, saying, What is this? What new doctrine is this? For with authority he commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. And immediately his fame spread across throughout all the region around Galilee. Now, they were amazed. Why were they amazed? Because they were used to, if they had evil spirits, it was going to be a rough ride. It was going to be a problem. They'd probably be there for days trying to get a spirit out of someone or cause them, and quite often they couldn't. But suddenly Jesus comes on the scene, and evil and darkness just has to go. 
when he speaks. They, uh, and of course to his disciples later on, to the apostles, they had the same power because they trusted and believed in Jesus Christ and they had truly been saved. And so then when they spoke to evil spirits and rebuked them, which we're told to do, they had to leave. So we don't have to make lots of commotion. We don't have to have all sorts of things going on like you have in the darker side of things, in spiritualism. We don't have to get involved on that kind of level. We just have to see evil and then rebuke it. As children of God, as apostles of the Lord Jesus Christ, and members of God's church, as we move on, the foundation of the church is established, God's work is established, we have to just make sure that we know that we have that authority. It's important that you understand you have the authority you it's no point you think oh i don't know if i have or not because you're not going to get anywhere with that you have to know that you are righteous in christ you're covered by his blood that satan cannot touch you if you're under the blood and you have authority and you use that authority in jesus name and it's the name of Jesus that will drive out, it's his righteousness that will drive out evil spirits, not your righteousness. If you're standing there in your own righteousness trying to get a, de a demon out of someone, I'm sorry, you'll probably be there a long time. You know, the grass could grow. So, don't be silly, don't be foolish. Make sure that you actually are a child of God before you start doing this. And also get people to support you in prayer and possibly even be with you when you do this kind of thing and to be praying for you and making sure that you stay safe, that it doesn't come out of them and go into you because you're not in the right place. So be very careful when it comes to the dark side because Satan is there like a roaring lion, you know, roaming around waiting for someone to devour. Be careful it's not you. So don't get involved in stuff you don't understand. Don't try and do things if you're not sure of your salvation because you won't have authority, because you don't have the confidence to know who you are in Christ. Amen. 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 <laughs> Amen.